Hey guys, over the past few weeks I've been going through all the stuff on my back porch, up in the attic, and throughout my place, looking for things that I could box up and put into a storage locker. Something that was long, long overdue. So uh, I found a good space at a local public storage facility. Got a 10 by 10 room with uh, about 10 foot high ceilings. And uh, I also picked up some boxes after measuring my pitcher tubes that I've had loose lying around here like that 16 GP4 that was bad and I found that the large size box they sell was perfect for 16 and under round pitcher tubes and certainly 14 and under rectangular and possibly a 16 inch rectangular I haven't tried that yet because uh, in addition to these chassis I've got lying around with pitcher tubes mounted in them I've also got a number of spare pitcher tubes just like this and this is a very dangerous way to store something like this imagine that falls over and boom so uh, yeah I've been moving a lot of stuff over there especially all my all my pitcher tubes including the ones that were bad I know some of you expressed uh, an opinion that I should hang on to them because someday maybe they can get rebuilt so I have been saving all of them rest assured still have a few more things I want to move over there like Spare Zenith porthole chassis, spare Motorola chassis, spare Admiral chassis, and so on. But yeah, I, I can finally walk around on the back porch and actually, uh, <laughs> you know, reach everything for the first time in a while. And also, I've been going through a lot of stuff up in the attic. Now it actually looks a lot worse than it is up here because a lot of these boxes are actually empty. I'm just hanging on to them for now uh, in case I can find something that I can put in them and then put into storage. Otherwise I'll start breaking these boxes down. Well, while I've been going through all this stuff, I've stumbled across some items that might be suitable for a Friday Night Restoration video. Let's see, Philco 76 chassis, it's had a lot of stuff scavenged off of it, I don't think that will do. It's a Zenith Bug Eye Portable set, and that's a little bit too ambitious for one night, as is this Admiral Portable. Then we've got some items over here that I want to take a look at. A WR99 Crystal Calibrated Marker Generator. It's used for aligning TVs, uh, vintage TVs that use the old 22 megahertz IF. I don't have the accompanying sweep generator though, so I think I'll save that for another day. And there we have a much more modern Suncor SM152 sweep generator. This does the 44 megahertz IFs, and I think you can do FM radios with it too. So it does have a 10.7 megahertz mode. Well, that's not what I want to look at tonight either. What I want to look at is this guy. Now, I've done some other videos on VTVMs, including the Senior Volt Ohmist, but I haven't done one on this yet. This is the Master Volt Ohmist, the largest of the group. There's a nice big display on it. I bought uh, these items from a friend a couple weeks ago. I have not done much with it yet. So I thought this would be a good opportunity. Uh, I've never looked at the schematic for this. I, I don't know really if it differs much from the others. Except uh, one thing, it seems uh, you can do current. I don't think the other RCA VTVMs do current. It looks like this can, uh, am I reading this right? You go up to 15 amps? Is that what that says there? Yeah, it's like 1.5 amps and 15 amps. It's pretty good for a meter, most don't go that high for the amperage range. Although this scale here only goes to 500 milliamps. So I'll figure out the manual and check on that. Otherwise, let's see, we got plus minus volts, ohms, AC volts, and current. And there's where the volts ohm probe goes, and the other jacks down below there are for current. So let's take this down. We'll go online, try to find a manual for it. Hey, let's pop it open and take a look.
Well, unfortunately, it would seem that there are no schematics or user's manuals available for free download online. I found a few sites that would sell me a copy, or I could ask around and maybe somebody would be nice enough to scan a copy for me. But I really want to work on this set tonight, so I'll just wing it. What I did find, however, were YouTuber All American Five's series of videos when he worked on one of these. I'd seen them a while ago when he first put them up, but I'd kind of forgotten about it. Now his was in fairly poor condition inside. The internal battery had leaked and uh, he had some other issues as I recall. So I hope mine's in better condition than that. But it certainly gave me some tips like how to open this case, for example. So if you look around the sides, you don't see any screws. Or on the back. But where there are screws are down here. In fact, one of them has already been removed. So let's get this other one out. Okay, so that got that off. Ah, and now I'm going to have to remove all these Phillips screws all around the outside. Okay, I think I've got all the screws out. Oh, oh, one left. some slack in the power cord now. And there we go. And right away you can see that there is a battery. It's an energizer. Hopefully it hasn't been leaking all over. So there is that battery. Looks like I got lucky. See, it's a horrible layout here. What could happen is if that battery leaks electrolyte, it goes right under the power transformer. <laughs> it looks like uh, this battery isn't all that old. And uh, it's a high quality one and it hasn't leaked. So. Doesn't look like uh, any significant work's ever been done to this. It's pretty clean though. It says memory serves on the other VTVMs of this vintage. There should be a selenium rectifier or an early silicon rectifier in here somewhere. And that's electrolytic filter cap, I think. 10 microfarad, 250 volt, I think. And there's a big honking capacitor that uh, I learned from uh, the All American 5 video. It's a little tricky to replace. It's a 0.1 microfarad at 1600 volts. And just like he didn't have one on hand, I'm not so sure I do either. But I'll look around. Who knows, it might be okay too. They tended to use pretty high quality parts on these old, or sorry, <laughs> tend to use pretty high quality components on test equipment. So yeah, not much to it. You have three tubes, of course I'll check the tubes. Definitely want to have some good, good strong tubes in a piece of test equipment. I'll see if the battery's any good. You never know, it might still, uh, well, I guess I can check that right now. You know, this battery might still have uh, some juice left in it. Well, what do you know? This battery does still have some life left. Alright, as for the rest of this. I will go ahead and replace this one electrolytic and these 2.07 microfarad 400 volt caps and I'll see if I can dig up a replacement for that big 1600 volt cap. Let's 
see. Should be a rectifier in here somewhere. I still, still haven't quite found it yet. Unless I wonder. Oh yeah, huh. Uh, this has three tubes. Uh, most VTVMs just have two. They have a 6AL5 and a 12AU7. Well, this has a third tube, a third 6AL5, and it sure looks to me like that is being used as the rectifier. Right here. I replaced both of those white capacitors here. And got the new electrolytic down in here. And then I went hunting for a replacement for this big guy, and I got lucky. I actually do happen to have a 0.1 microfarad 1600 volt cap on hand. I actually bought this a while ago to restore this Simpson 383 capacitor. Well, I'll just make a note to order another one, and I'll use this guy and this VTVM for now. I also started checking some of these precision resistors which is supposed to be 1% accurate. In other words, pretty much what you see printed on there is what you should read with an accurate ohm meter. For example, this guy says 18.9 uh, meg, 1%. I'm measuring closer to 20. And similarly, I measured a few others and they're all a bit high. They're certainly off by more than 1%. However, these are not easy to come by, especially 2 watt 1% resistors in these oddball values. So I'm just going to leave them all in place and see how the meter functions, especially after I go through the calibration, because some of these calibration controls may be able to compensate to some extent for these resistors being off a little bit. I've installed that nice new big cap and I sprayed the switches and the two front panel controls with some deoxit. I tested the tubes, they are all good, and they appear to be the original RCA tubes. There's not a whole lot of load put on tubes in a VTVM, so it's not unusual for them to last decades. Now let's try powering this thing up. Before I do that, I notice that the needle's off a little bit. There's a mechanical adjustment for zeroing down in here, so I can tweak that a bit to get that dead on zero. You want to make sure you're looking straight on the meter when you do that. That's why they provide this mirrored strip here. You want to uh, get yourself situated so that you only see one line. You don't see a reflection of the line off to one side or the other. I believe they call that parallax. Alright, turn it on. Let's get sign. Pilot light came on. Nothing went boom or pop. The needle's now pegging down to the left. Oh, no, it's rising up. It's the tube's heating up. Can use the zero adjust here to get it onto zero. TC zero, that's a good sign. And on ohms, it should shoot all the way over to the right up to infinity when I don't have any probes connected. Excellent. And that's what this other control is for. This one is for putting the needle on zero, and this one is for putting the needle on infinity or all the way to the right when you have no when you have nothing connected to the uh, to the probes meaning an infinite resistance well that's all looking excellent so far now as far as the probes go we've got some banana jacks along the bottom these are all for current ground and we have this odd looking thing it's a sort of a precursor to the BNC connector. 
You could replace that with a BNC connector, in fact, but you still are going to have to deal with the probe. Now, luckily, I've got what I believe is the right probe from some of my other VTVMs. That's this guy. Here's what the connector looks like. And here's the probe. I notice there's a switch in there. That's because there's actually a resistor inside. I think it's a 1 mega ohm resistor that goes between the tip and the, the center uh, pin on the connector when you're only in DC mode. I believe in AC and ohms mode, it's just a straight through connection. This is made by Viz, who took over the test equipment line from RCA, I think sometime in the 60s, maybe early 70s. So if I connect that and hook up something for ground. A loose connection, but what should do. Now if I touch these two together, I've got the probe in the ohms mode, that needle should go back over to zero. Alright, off a little bit. Take this. Alright, well, that all looks excellent. Now, let's see if I can actually measure something. Let's see, I'll dig up a resistor. Uh, make sure I get a precision one. That's a 15K resistor, I do believe. You know, when you do this, you don't want to hold both ends with your hands. Otherwise, your body's resistance is going to go in parallel with the resistor and throw off the reading. So I'll just hold it on with my thumb here. And we're getting nothing, but I'm only on R times 10. Meaning all the way over to the right is only 10 ohms. And this is 15,000 ohms. So let's crank the range up. Uh, looks like it's off a bit. It's measuring about 2. Let's go up one more range. Oh, that's a lot closer. It's almost dead on to 15. In this range, though, it's more closer to 2, but you really you want to keep this on a range where you're getting a reading somewhere in the, in the meat of the meter rather than one of the extremes. And I want 10k range. Eh, it's off a little bit. It's actually reading. 12, uh, yeah, 12k instead of 15k, or uh, 14k, I mean. But, uh, geez, that is, that's pretty darn good right there. <laughs> Try uh, a larger value here, let's see. Five hundred and sixty ohm, five hundred and sixty kilo ohm. Five uh, it's reading about five fifty. I'll try doing one at the low end. Two ohms, I think. How about that? Twenty two. All right. Well, I just hope the DC and AC ranges work just as well. See, for that, I will dig out a variable DC power supply and I'll hook up my digital meter in parallel so I can compare both readings simultaneously.
Here's the power supply I'm going to be using for the calibration process. It's a Hewlett Packard 6228B. Really nice bench supply if you're looking for something in the 50 volt range. Two independent supplies, 0 to 50 volts and 0 to 1 amp on both sides. And you can dial in either the voltage or the current and you can monitor the uh, meters there. And also these are independent so you got a separate plus and minus from ground. So you can actually put these in series and make this a 100 volt power supply. Alright, here are the calibration instructions that I found on the antique radio form. First thing we're going to do is the current. And they say to connect it up to a 25 milliamp load. So what I'm going to do is hook this in series with power supply in series with this meter. And this meter I'll use to monitor the current accurately. If I see 25 milliamps flowing through this, that means there should be 25 milliamps flowing through this. Okay, here's my setup for the current calibration. I've got the minus current lead going to the negative on the power supply. Positive on the power supply, it's going through a 1000 ohm current limiting resistor. Positive input on my digital ammeter. Negative lead of the digital ammeter goes to the positive MA input on the VTVM. So what this lets me do is I can read the current on the digital meter. I can assume, uh, presume that that's fairly accurate. And I can adjust the current by varying this nice precision multi-turn control here until I get exactly 25 milliamps. Now, if there's 25 milliamps flowing through this, there has to be 25 milliamps flowing through that. So it's all connected in series. Right, close enough, 25.01. And we can see this is just tad high. So let's see what we're supposed to adjust. Just R14. Oh, I'm not exactly sure where R14 is, which is kind of a problem, but I will poke around and see if there are labels on these trimmers that are inside. Conveniently, the trimmers on there are labeled. AC Cal, Current adjust, minus DC cal, plus DC cal. So those are what I will be tweaking. Well, I also noticed, reading ahead in these instructions, so let's adjust R14 to half scale, then you apply 50 milliamps and adjust R14 for full scale, and then it says in parentheses, editor, this is probably a superfluous step. Yeah, I would think so too. If you're going to tweak, 20, if you're going to tweak R14, at 25 milliamps and then again at 50 well why not just adjust it to 50 and forget about 25 but I'll do it anyways let's see a, a screwdriver Twenty-five, and now crank this up to fifty. And do it again. There go, and boy, that's that's right on five. So, no tweaking necessary. All right, should be it for current adjustments. Uh, DC voltage, blah blah blah. This time we will apply 50 volts to the plus. Uh, put the probe into DC mode and apply 50 volts to it. And then adjust R15 DC cal for exactly 50. And then reverse the leads and adjust the minus DC cal for exactly 50.
Okay, now for the DC voltage. Uh, instead of using the current inputs, I am now using the ground and my probe. And I definitely have the switch in the DC operation position. That's going right to the positive terminal on my voltmeter. This 1K resistor is no longer in circuit. I've also got my digital meter right in parallel with the VTVM. And not surprisingly, when I switched from current to volts, I didn't have to adjust anything because 50 milliamps into a 1000 ohm load takes 50 volts. So without me having to touch anything on this, I was already on exactly 50.0 volts. Now as for the VTVM, right now I'm on the 150 range. Looks like it's a tad high. If I drop down to the 50 range, yeah, it's off, it's off the right edge of the meter, so I have to tweak that a little bit. So, let's see, take a look again. Plus DC cal. It's right by the meter, so I need a real short screwdriver to get at that guy. Something like this will do the trick. Kind of tricky to both get this in the control. See the meter at the same time. There we go. Back. Right about there. Alright, if I go to the 150 range, it should be right on 5. It's pretty close. Let's see, 50. Yeah, a little bit too far. Alright, cool. Dead on. Alright, now we reverse, reverse the leads rather and uh, do negative. Yeah, that's off too. All right, excellent. Now, AC calibration. Now for that, we're going to need some AC. So I'm going to use my Variac for my isolated AC source. I actually use my Variac in conjunction with an isolation transformer to check that. You definitely don't want to just stick these probes into an outlet. Uh, <laughs> you want a little more protection than that. So you don't want to electrocute yourself. Alright, so here's the instructions. First thing we do is put it on the AC volts 1.5 range and short the clip leads together and adjust R47 for exactly zero. And yes, that, I did notice that control does stick out the back of the unit so maybe that's something that needs to be adjusted fairly often because you can actually adjust it once the set is all assembled. Go through the ranges, make sure it's all still zero. If it's not, swap or replace the 6AL5. That's because it uses the two halves of the 6AL5 as a type of bridge, I believe. And then we need to hook up that 150 VAC source. I'm not so sure I can get 150 with my Variac, but I'll, I'll get as close as I can. It's pretty hot today, 
So everybody's got their AC running, which drags down the uh, AC line voltage. It's probably down to 115 or so, whereas it's normally closer to 127. Okay, I've made the AC zero adjust, so we're right on zero throughout the various AC ranges. Now I've taken a lamp cord and took the stripped ends and connected one to the ground lead and the other to the end of my probe. Be careful to keep them well separated so I don't short anything out. And I'm going to plug the end into my isolation transformer which is plugged into my Variac which gives me a variable AC source. All right, I've got to dial down pretty low, we're just down at 1.2 volts. They want me to get to 150. I'll get as much as I can. There's 100. Right, there it's maxed out. Now my isolation transformer is actually an ISO tap, meaning it's got a range switch on it. And that acts as a crude variac too. So Alright, so if I leave that there and dial my Variac down, I can actually get to 150. Uh, 150.3 close enough, and the meter, pretty close, off just a bit. Let's see where the AC control is. Oh, there it is. Pretty easy to get to. Fifty the meters dropped down a little bit on top, huh? so tweak it a little bit. Oh, I'll make another adjustment. Well, that's pretty darn close. Now for the final adjustment they suggest using a five, uh, sorry, a 200 volt AC 100 kilohertz source and tweak uh, ceramic capacitor. I do not have anything like that. I have no way of making more than about 20 volts AC at 100 kilohertz so I'm just going to skip that part for now. We already looked at the ohms earlier, but I'll do a second pass now that I've tweaked a bunch of uh, trimmers in there. And that'll be it for the calibration. I tried the ohms function again, and it's still working just fine. So that completes the electrical restoration. Now I'm moving on to the cosmetic restoration. All the knobs and jacks were quite filthy, so I've pulled them all off and I have them soaking in this glass containing a mix of about 50-50 409 multi-purpose cleaner and warm water and I'll let them soak in here for an hour or two I find this is a lot more effective than trying to scrub off the gunk with a toothbrush just let it soak for a while and all that old nasty stuff just falls right off Oh, uh, I was pondering earlier if this thing really does have a 15 amp range. It sure does. And here's the meter shunt going between the common and the 15 amp jack. It's a piece of 14 gauge wire. Maybe pure copper, maybe an alloy of some sort. What that does is route virtually all of the current straight through the device and it just picks off a small amount to make the actual measurement. And finally, here it is all back together. 
Those knobs turned out real nice after they came out of the soapy solution. Of course, I went over them with Novus number two. And I cleaned up the cabinet a little bit, put it all back together, replaced all the missing screws. So, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this look at an RCA Master Volt Omist WV-87B.